Okay, in this final clip, we're going to look at what we looked at in part 8, but for very specific values of alpha. Let's start with the first case where alpha is pi on 2. Now, pi on 2 is 90 degrees. If you think back to our previous diagram, what we had was alpha being the angle between the uh, subtended from the chord. Now we know that if that angle is 90 degrees, then we end up with an angle in a semicircle from our extension one circle geometry. So this ends up with a locus of Z being A semicircle where the diameter is Z1, Z2, as opposed to previously when Z1, Z2 was just a core. Next case, what happens if alpha? is plus or minus pi and 2. Well, we end up with two semicircles together combining to result in locus being a full circle. Maybe we should write not with, but where Z1, Z2 is the diameter. Next case, what if alpha is 180 degrees? Maybe we write as pi. Okay, so let's go back to our previous diagram. If alpha is to be 180 degrees, that would mean that these two vectors must come so far down that they overlap. So Z would be a point anywhere on that interval. So alpha equals pi results in an interval which lies between Z1 and Z2. And finally, what happens if alpha is equal to zero. In this case, this means that, well, let's, let's write it out. Argand of Z minus Z1 minus Argand of Z minus Z2 equals zero. Or, Another way of writing that is arg of z minus z1 is equal to arg of z minus z2. So the angles of those two must be the same. So let's draw an, a set of axes. Pick a z1 and pick a z2. Now, those angles must be the same. So, just like before, where we had an in interval of Z1, Z2, we have an interval again. In our third case, when we had our argument equaling 
180 degrees equaling pi, we ended up with this interval. So in this case, I know in the case for this angle, and this angle must be the same. They must equal. So theta 1 and theta 2 must be the same. So the resultant locus is two lines on the same axis but moving in opposite directions. The way to write that is the locus of arg z minus z1 over z minus z2 equals 0 is the straight line passing through z1 and z2 oops, z2 but not including the interval z1 z2 now that covers the four cases as well as variety of questions that are based around vectors on the complex plane